Hi, thanks for joining me today. I've got a problem from the Russian Olympiad from 2010. We call a positive integer k unlucky if it cannot be written in this form. Uh, so k would be equal to m squared minus 1 over n squared minus 1, where m and n are positive integers. We want to know, are there infinitely many unlucky numbers? In other words, are there infinitely many positive integers which cannot be written in this form here? Do pause the video and have a go at this problem for yourself. I'm going to dive straight into a solution. So I claim that p squared is an unlucky number whenever p is an odd prime. And obviously there are infinitely many odd primes, so essentially I'm claiming that there are infinitely many unlucky numbers. Let's prove this claim. And the way we're going to prove this is by contradiction. So I'm going to suppose for contradiction that p squared is not unlucky. And so therefore p squared can be written in the form m squared minus 1 over n squared minus 1. With a bit of cross multiplication, I get that p squared times n squared minus 1 equals m squared minus 1, which is just m plus 1 times m minus 1, like so. Now, clearly, the left-hand side here is just the product uh, of these numbers, and in particular, it's going to be a multiple of p squared. Uh, so it's a multiple of p, and so therefore, one of these numbers here must be a multiple of p. Uh, because p is a prime, it can't be broken down any further, so one of them must be a multiple of p. In particular, I, it must be exactly one of them is a multiple of p, because both of them can't be. Let's see why. If both of them were multiples of p, let's say that this was k times p, and this was l times p, if I did kp minus lp, that would equal m plus 1 minus m minus 1, which is just 2. But then this left-hand side is pretty clearly oops, a multiple of p. It's p times k minus l. And this would tell us that p is a factor of 2. But there are no odd prime numbers that are factors of 2. And so this would give us a contradiction immediately. So therefore, both of these can't be multiples of p. So exactly one of them is going to be a multiple of p. And in fact, that whichever one it is a multiple of p will in fact also be a multiple of p squared because the left-hand side is a multiple of p squared. So we're going to split this into two cases. The first case is going to be when m plus 1 is a multiple of p squared. So let's just call it lambda times p squared, where lambda is a positive integer. So if this is the case, we can just substitute this back into this equation here. And we're going to get p squared times n squared minus 1 equals m plus 1, which is lambda p squared, times m minus 1, which is lambda p squared minus 2. OK, we can cancel the p squareds on both sides. And then if we add 1 on both sides, we get that n squared is just uh, lambda squared p squared minus 2 lambda plus 1, like so. So n squared equals this, and hopefully it's pretty good to see, because lambda is a positive integer, this thing here is definitely less than lambda squared p squared. And so just by square rooting both sides and noting that everything is positive, we get that n must be less than lambda p. OK, cool. But we can actually build on this and go the other way and say that this thing here must be bigger than, so n squared is bigger than, lambda squared p squared minus 2 lambda p plus 1. Because all I've done here is instead of subtracting 2 lambda, I've subtracted 2 lambda p, so an even bigger number. And so n squared must be bigger than this, but this is precisely lambda p minus 1 squared. And again, we get that n must be bigger than lambda p minus 1 by square rooting both sides. But then we have that n is less than lambda times p, but it's bigger than lambda p minus 1. But lambda p is an integer. And n is supposed to also be an integer. And we get this here, that n is an integer in between two consecutive integers. And that makes no sense whatsoever. This is a contradiction. Hence, case 1 gives us a contradiction. And in fact, you can do something very, very similar for case 2, which would be where m minus 1 is a multiple of p squared. And you'll get a contradiction in a very similar manner. And this proves our claim. So this means that p squared is unlucky whenever p is an odd prime because of contradiction. And since there are infinitely many odd primes, there are infinitely many unlucky numbers, and that solves our problem. I hope this has made sense, and I hope you have enjoyed this problem, a nice little problem with a very nice solution. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.